and we're back. Crazy Larry Perna in the house, folks. Professional MMA fighter slash strength training coach slash science major. I own a college. Get a load of this guy, right? Talk about having an ultimate mind. So Larry's about to fight, as we know, um, next Saturday in Latham, New York, MMA. Um, I have a few questions because I always wondered what it's like to uh, get involved in something like that. So let's try to paint a picture for our viewers of the mind that you need to prepare yourself for a fight. I want to know the biggest challenge of uh, – of fighting for you, the biggest challenge of training, the whole aspect. What's the hardest thing that you can label, if there is one? Uh, for me, it'd be uh, the physical, diet. mental, it, anything. It, it'd be the diet. The and diet part. The diet. And that, now, that, why is that? I love food. Okay. But uh, it also affects everything. So when you're you're in fight camp, it's when uh, you're training the hardest, so you're burning the most calories. Right. And now I'm trying to drop weight, so I'm eating less calories than I normally would. So now you, mm -hmm. you're doing more work on less energy and it just you're just tired all the time, everything hurts. How many hours a day do you train? Uh yesterday was about 3, 3 and a half, 4 yesterday. 3 and a half, 4 hours. Now what exactly did you do during this time? Uh in the morning I did uh uh small glove work, so it was like MMA mm -hmm. and like some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu grappling. Like ground kind of stuff, takedown submissions. Yep. Uh, then I came in, uh, lifted. I did a uh, overhead press, try to keep my strength up. And then in the evening, I did uh, tie pads. What's so, a tie pad, Larry? Uh, tie pad is a. It's a striking surface that I would I would like you would punch, you would kick, elbows, throw knees like. Uh, it's a, a pad that you would hit that you would work your your, your stand up your box. They're rectangular in shape, yes. Yes. And you hold two of them. You hold two of them. Gotcha. All right. That sounds like one heck of a day. Yeah. It was and that's just one day. Yeah, it's tiring. And how many days a week do you train? Uh, like usually every day. Maybe, maybe I'll take Saturday off because um. You might take a day off. Maybe. Everybody needs a day off, right? Uh, a, a lot of times, like <laughs> I'll, I'll go I'll go the entire week training. If if I got somebody that'll train with me. I'll train every day. Wow, that that's probably not the smartest or the safest thing to do, but th this this is what I enjoy doing. Like any, any body pains right now? Uh, right now, no. I'm I'm pretty good right now. No knee pain. No knee pain. Your elbows feel good. It, everything feels good right now. Okay. Two weeks ago, everything hurt. Right. Why is that? Because you're just training harder. Training harder or? and. Uh, Two weeks ago, it was a uh, it was a lot of the hard sparring. Mm -hmm. Sparring is uh, it's basically like a safe fight. So when we fight, we wear like four ounce gloves in MMA or a ten ounce glove in boxing Muay Thai. Yeah, they're a little lighter than normal. Yeah. Yeah, th 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 that's a normal glove. And then in sparring, I wear a twenty ounce glove. Oh. You wear headgear. I wear two pairs of shin guards. Mm -hmm. So it's it's safer. But, but you still can. Get yeah, hit. you're still getting hit. You feel it. Yeah, like uh, and I, I knocked some people down that, in this camp. Down? Yeah, like th with body shots. Now right. camp? What do you mean camp? What's camp that? camp is uh like the six to ten weeks before uh before a fight where you really start honing, like re you really start getting the shape. You get your diet in check. Yep. Uh, and then you work the things for the fight. So you don't really learn anything new. It's mm. I know how to do these ten moves, and you. Practice those ten moves over and over and over again. Moves. Yeah. Let's Name look. one move. Uh, double leg takedown. Double leg takedown. That sounds like pretty pretty dangerous. Well, now, what do you want to accomplish by doing a double leg takedown? Uh, I I want to in a, in a fight. Uh, you're always better. Just like in life, you it's always better to be on top. Uh huh. So if if we're standing, we're both throwing punches. Usually, even if you're, you're a better striker, it, it's still like a 50-50 ball game. Right. Like, mm -hmm. that you're going to hit me, I'm going to take damage. But uh, if I take you down via a double leg takedown, it kind of looks like a football tackle. Okay. Then, now I'm on top of you. Now I'm punching you. And you don't really have much. So you're standing, you're standing up. Yeah. You're in your position. And all of a sudden, do you have to move to your left or to your right to do this? Uh, or do you, you just come straight at you him? You go forward. So You move forward. Yeah, so you, so you drop your butt, so you kind of squat down a little bit. Yep. And then you drive forward. 
and you grab the you grab the back of their knees. Oh. And you take them down. No, for some reason I thought this was a kick move. No. Uh-uh. All right, like a football tackle. Like a football yeah, like tackle. Bingo. Like you said. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. All right, so you practice that over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, now, would you say you nailed that particular move? It's Since you, I mean, you brought it up. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. Hmm. You know, I've never seen one of them before. It'd be pretty sweet to see one, though. Mm. Let me tell you. All right. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So no food for you, bud. Yeah. Not till not till the fight's over. Not till after the fight. That's till the fight's over. Then I'm, then I'm gonna eat donuts until I throw up. So which number fight is this for Larry? I think this is number ten. Tenth fight. Yeah. I'm not gonna ask if you ever lost a fight. I have. I, every, everybody's lost. You did? Every, yeah, I've lost. I've lost Muay Thai fights. No big deal, or just another check in the box. Uh, Talk to me about it. A, a, for every, you, for you, because I know some people like it's their life. You know, I don't feel like this is your life. I feel like it's something you really enjoy and you get a real good rise out of. Am I right in saying that or, or, or no? Yeah, it, it, it can't be your life because if, if it's your life. It can't be your life. Cause what about it's like, Conor McGregor's life. Nah, he, he's, he's, he's married. He's got a wife. It can't be his life. That's his life. It, it should be. His wife. I think he's got kids. Well, if you have kids, that's your life. Like, okay. Like, okay. Like, like, like fighting Fighting is a huge. An outlet? It's an outlet. And even if it's, if it's a huge part of your life, it can't be. Like one thing can't be your life. Like even even if you love your job, you love anything, you you need to be a complete person. You need to you need love and work. So even if you love fighting or you love your job, you're a firefighter. You you're a you're a vet saving puppies. Right. Like you love that. You need you need family. You need friends. You need a uh, significant other. Like you need, as Freud said, you need love and work. You need the two things to balance each other. If you only have one. And uh, you're not a complete person. And there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a hole. There's so this for you is love. This no, is, this is work. It's work. It's work. I, I, I in lo- a sense because I, I love I mean, it, but it's it's work. Okay, okay. You love your work though. Yeah. Which is a whole other ball game. Well, you're supposed to love your work. Yeah. Ideally, you would love your work. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, what were we talking about? I just lost myself for a second. Uh, h- how I deal with uh with losses. Okay, all right. Now this Saturday coming up, I want to know if uh if if you win, what's the out? What what happens for you? What's the benefit of winning? Pride, money, what is it? Uh, both. Exposure. You want to go bigger? Do you want to go like travel the world and fight? What like? I I've traveled the world and fought. What's already. the next step? I I the next step would be just keep winning fights. Uh, how I many got- fights do you want to do? I want to fight as long as it's fun and my body holds up. Like, knock on wood, l- lucky me, I haven't taken much head trauma. Mm-hmm. Much? How many? How much you've had? Eh, there's always a little head trauma, but for as much as I've been around, I take very little head trauma. By trauma, that means like just a knock to the head? Getting hit in the head. Like, like any time you get hit in the head is, bad. is head trauma. Oh. So, like, <laughs> e- even, like, soccer players, when, when they hit the soccer ball, like, is head yep. trauma. Trauma. Head trauma. That yeah. word seems so powerful, but I mean, a, a soccer ball to the head does not seem that powerful. It, but it's it, bad. Yeah, because uh, negative. Well, the the, the uh, problem where you we run into brain deterioration is not from the actual impact. It's uh, the sloshing of your brain in your in your cranium because your your brain is suspended in water, so it's the back and forth whipping mm. that really hurts it. Mm-hmm. So that's why soccer players have a lot of head trauma. Boxers have more than MMA fighters, mm-hmm. even though, like, if you eat, you get hit with a jab, which is a small, uh, not a very hard punch, but if you get hit with 100 jabs as opposed to 10 big power punches, like a right hand or a left hook, which will do more damage initially, the 100 jabs will cause more long-term damage. I see. That's why all, all the guys in the NFL, even w- with the helmet, all of them have uh, – have, uh, Brain injuries. Did you watch that Will Smith movie about the helmets? I have not seen it. No. Oh, all right. I was going to ask you a question about that. But you, I, I know the actual story if you want to. Yeah. Real quick. Like, give me a breakdown of what, what it was all about. Well, it's just about. Uh, and if he was right or whatever. Oh, that doctor is correct. It's just, it's just from the repeated head trauma and it leads to brain deterioration. So, like, 
when they did autopsies on these guys, they were like 50 years old, yeah. but they had a brain of a like a hundred year old. Like, Whoa! That, that, like that's how how dead the tissue was. Dead tissue? Yeah. Oh my lord! It's not good. So he, the doctor, wanted to what? He he just wanted to bring it to the NFL and be like, you. A new helmet or just the awareness? It, it, the awareness. I don't really know how the story went. It, it, it's, it's an awareness because uh, the helmet is actually. It doesn't it, do anything for it, you. It, in, in my opinion, the helmet is actually a bad thing. It's bad? It's bad. Because <laughs> if, you, if you look at rugby, yeah. like it's a, ve- it's a similar sport. It's not the exact same thing. Right. But they have way less head trauma because they wear a soft helmet or no helmet. So they're not using their helmet as a weapon. In uh, American oh. football, you have a, have a plastic a plastic helmet with a metal face mask, and e- even when I when I played football, like they were like, "Oh, use your face mask as a weapon," and like, I would I would take my face mask and I'd I'd hit you in the stomach with it, I'd hit you in the head with it, I used it as a weapon. So that every time that was that was brain trauma. Okay, and so and I imagine that when you're fired up in a sport like that, you really go all out. With oh yeah. Your, uh, you know. Oh yeah, I'm trying to fit. knock you out. Yeah. That's some powerful stuff. That's really interesting too. Something I never thought about. So like your your head's in the helmet and you're banging around in the helmet. Yeah. And that's no good for anybody. No. That's like those little punches. Yeah, it's the little punches that, that get your your brain to uh wobble in uh the, the cerebral spinal fluid. Wow. You know, we sh- I wish I had more guests like you. You got some knowledge, man. That's what I'm talking about. Hey. I mean, you gotta thank Doctor Stabile. He uh, he taught me a lot of this stuff. Doctor Stabile. Doctor, does he still go? Is he still teach here? I I don't know him, but we can go find out. Uh, uh, till then, commercial break, a little a little music break rather, and uh, we'll be back very soon. <laughs> 